Hi, welcome to our Bible study. This morning we'll be in part two of the God Who Speaks Sunday School series, Writing the Bible. Today we'll find out how the Bible was written, get some insight into why it is, in fact, the inerrant word of God, and how it was written. It's a fascinating look, about a half hour video. Um, those of you joining us, um, uh, afterward, looking at our YouTube video, we cannot embed the video. It's copyrighted. I'm sorry. Uh, it's available from the guy who speaks dot org, um, and you can uh, pick up the Sunday School kit. Uh, you can you can also go there. The links are in our uh, Google Calendar. Um, you can also go there and get uh, the handout sheet that we're going to be sharing today. Um, and the kit. Uh, I picked up the kit for about twenty dollars, I believe, on, on eBay. But you can get it from directly from the God Who Speaks dot org, and how about that organization? It's good. It's good study. It's a good, uh, good look at um, the Bible as a kind of going back to basics. Like our pastor talked about this past weekend. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Hope you have a blessed rest of your day. All right, we'll begin at six oh two. Um, thanks for joining us this morning. This morning we're looking at. Uh, we're continuing with the God who speaks. Um, today's uh, good morning, Lori. Um, this morning we'll be uh, looking at uh, writing the Bible, how it's worked on, what what's involved as far as uh, did uh, God come down and sit on somebody's shoulder and dictate to them like a secretary? No, we know that's not true. But we talk about that about the inspiration of the word. It's it's really fascinating. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer and we'll be in by watching the film. Everybody, Father, we just thank you for time together. Um, we thank you for a uh, uh, place to meet. We thank you for the ability to meet online. Uh, Lord, bless our time together. Open our hearts and our minds to what you have for us today. Um, teach us, Lord, your word. You've placed your word above yourself. So, Lord, we ask uh, to enhance our understanding of what we're about to see. And give us good discussion after after we watch. Be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So uh, that story at the end really got, I, I watched the video already, and the story that at the end got to me really, got, and got to me again, I listened to it again. Um, the power of God's word, it really is his word. Anyway, we'll begin our discussion this morning. Um, I sent out the, uh, got had a discussion questions here. Um, First one is, what does it mean that the Bible is inspired? It looks like everyone is muted right now. So if you want to talk, you're going to have to unmute. Hey, uh, Scott, at your convenience, could you send that email to me again? I, I seem to have, I can't find it. I know I got it, but I can't find it for some reason. When you have a minute. Okay. All Thank right. you. Sure. Anyway, um, so what does it mean that the Bible is inspired? That's multifaceted. One of them is it talks about the source. Okay. What, what, what does that mean? What, what do you mean by that? Well, you have to authenticate something. There has to be a, a, a beginning point. Okay. It's more than just a collection of human writing. Um, the, I'm, I'm fascinated, and Jay Vernon McGee talked about uh, uh, in his church um, that when he had the, he had a, a Sunday morning service, a Sunday night service. Then, unlike most churches, Thursday night he did Bible study, and yeah, uh, and he'd have he said. Um, when I have a Bible study on Thursday nights, he says, if I want to fill the church, and that was one of the largest churches at the time, uh, sanctuaries, it was it held thousands. It was huge. Church of the Open Door in Los Angeles. Anyway, 
He said, if I want to build a church, we'll do, uh, I, if I do Revelation or uh, one of the prophetic books, I can fill the church. He says, but if I have the church, if I want to get about two or 300 people to come out, I'll do Romans or something. People are looking for prophecy. They're looking for a future. My point is that fulfilled prophecy from the Bible, to me, speaks to the fact that the word of God, the Bible that we have, is God's inspired word because it proves itself. And um, we've talked about, uh, as Mike and I did Daniel, uh, we talked about um, the fact that in Daniel, there's already fulfilled prophecy, meaning stuff's already come to pass. And then there's the future stuff, which is coming. Um, we don't know when. Um, but we, by believing the stuff that God prophesied first and understanding that that was actually given before it took place, then we can understand that what's coming later is going to be also true. So. So inspired to me, the Bible proves itself that God is not just a collection of, of writings of, of uh, knowledgeable writing, people that were somewhat literate, wrote down things that happened that they might have thought that happened. That that alone gives me the, the trust that the Bible is the inspired word of God. Plus it was by the Holy Spirit. Right. Well, Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three parts, one God, being one. Um, that's one of the mysteries that we talked about. Uh, um, they talked about last week. Um, you can't get that except through the word of God that that's true. Looking out at the, at the glory of nature or the power of nature, and yesterday with all the wind coming here in western New York, um, you can get it, understand that there's something greater than us in control, but you can't get the understanding or get to know who God is and uh, what he does without the word. Um, the word is, um, and the Bible tells us that God has placed his word above himself. And uh, one of the more fascinating aspects uh, of the scripture, it says, um, truly what I have thought has, will come to pass and has come to pass and is, it's coming to pass. Um, so again, that inspiration to me uh, is just, it just proves itself. I guess that's the best way I can. Well, to be inspired is just, is just a, a conclusion that you come to based on evidence. Okay. That's what yes. I'm getting at. So okay. it, yeah. it, 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 there's so much evidence, it must be authenticated. You come to the conclusion, therefore, it must be inspired. Well, There's nothing to disprove it. There's so much that proves it. Right. Therefore, it must be inspired. But it's still a conclusion that you come to. And what's fascinating to me, to your point, Keith, anytime the Bible says something as far as, uh, well, this, this pool was at this place, or uh, this building was in this location, or uh, where there's physical, where the Bible gives physical evidence of, what's happening and where, uh, we have, uh, as archaeology goes on, people say, well, that can't, that's not true. Uh, oh, we found, we found this evidence of this building or this, the pool of Siloam. They said, no, that wasn't there. They found it, you know. Uh, also, um, certain rulers, the Bible says some, uh, a certain ruler ruled at a certain time. Well, we can find, you know, up until the last hundred years, there are certain rulers that are mentioned in the Bible. Well, they said, no, that's not true because we can't find any evidence. Well, as time goes on, they're finding the evidence of these rulers. They'll find some a writing or reference in a, a parchment that's thousands of years old saying, oh, that's true. It was there. So um, historically, uh, and just from a pu purely human standpoint, the word of God is... Uh, it, it's inspired, but it's true because we're, we just keep finding the evidence of it. Uh, is that, are those like part of the foundations of apologetics? Yes. Yes. To a certain degree. Yeah. 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 Because, it, because in order to claim that this is a true book and that it's real, um, you have to 
it has to be true and real. And to find evidence now, thousands of years later, there are other writings that, that took place at the same time that um, aren't historically correct or are just musings of a, of a delusional man or woman in some cases, um, where this is so real and so provable that it has to be inspired. It has to be God's word. I'm talking too much. What else is there? Um, let's discuss something they mentioned in the, in the film, progressive revelation. Um, how does that, what is the idea behind progressive revelation and how does that help us understand the Bible as a whole? What is progressive, first of all, what does progressive revelation mean? So everybody raise your hand. Progressive revelation, okay. Progressive revelation is uh, when God spoke to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, he alluded to the fact that there was going to be a savior that was going to rescue them, if you will. He was going to send someone where the enemy of our souls would be uh, uh, the person that he sends, he would uh, harm him, but the person that he sends would crush uh, the enemy and, and, and save us, if you will. So Adam and Eve, that little bit of revelation is all they could probably understand at the time. Uh, when we get to Abraham, um, he's giving revelation to Abraham. Okay, I want you to leave your family. I want you to go to a land I tell, I tell you, um, and uh, I will prosper you. And Abraham says, okay. And by him doing that, God counted that faith as it was counted unto him as righteousness. As we, as we read in, in Genesis, God counted that faith as righteousness. Now we fast forward to this time and we're reading in the book of Hebrews. And now book of Hebrews warns us that, okay, in times past, God uh, kind of graded on a curve based on the understanding people had. But now with the revelation that we have progress forward 2000 years, we've got the word of God. We have a printed copy of God's word now we are held responsible. We must, in order to be saved, we have to believe that, that the Son of God that God sent is, in fact, the Son of God, and then he died for our sins. So that's, again, based on what we know, because of God's word, we're held to a higher standard, where Abraham or even David, who prophesied of the coming Messiah, if you will, um, was held to a lesser standard than we are. So we have more knowledge today than David ever thought of having, or Daniel, some of the, some of the pillars of the Old Testament. Um, all the writers, <clears throat> Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, John's gospel was the last gospel written. It was written because of all the apostasy going on and all the her heresies that were being introduced into the church showing that Jesus was, in fact, the Son of God. It was a testimony. If you will. It was written in about 90 AD, and he, or 96 AD, and he died in 100 AD, short on the timeline. Uh, so that, again, progressive revelation, couldn't understand in the Old Testament. People weren't held to a higher standard. Now we're held to a higher standard because of what we know and what we've been told and what we are. But there's a trust factor here. There's a faith involved. We have, we're held, our faith, is in the word of God and in his Christ's son. So, but we have the testimony in the Bible that help us, give us that, that foundation. We have a, a firm foundation. Jesus is the foundation of our faith. The Bible is his revelation to us. Not, not saying the book of revelation, I'm talking about him revealing himself, God's revealing himself to us. All under the canopy that there is no new truth truth is always has been the same it just hasn't been fully revealed to us well and i think that's i think that's what in, in my opinion what heaven's going to be like it's just going to be continuous revelation well well it'll take eternity for us to find out all the the 
aspects of our God. Isn't, is, isn't that progressive? Yeah, that's yeah, that's the ultimate. That right? is, it is. What's fascinating to me as far as progressive revelation, what you have to be concerned about is when you list the some of the the heretics, and I'll use that word, that are teaching, claim to be teaching God's word, say, oh, I have a new word. Uh, God didn't mean that he meant this. Um, and we're warned at the end of Revelation. If anyone adds to this book, all the plagues in this book are going to get added to you. Well, that's a scary enough thing. I'm not going to do that. So, but again, the progressive revelation that we have as of today is the word of God and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and God's guidance as we as we move forward in faith. I'll tell you a quick story on faith and, and how things work. Um, I Mike's favorite book series, uh, the Left Behind series. Uh, I God placed on my heart that I needed to do something with. There's two two uh, parts of that Left Behind series that paint word pictures. If you've, if you've never read it, the pictures are uh, the two that I'm thinking about in particular are um, the uh, where the sheep and the goats are judged. The sheep are blessed. The goats are enter into eternal into, into eternal uh, uh, damnation. They're, they're damned for eternity. And the other one was um, there was the there was one other one. I'll, I'll just move on because this is this is I don't want to draw this out. So anyway, so I'm thinking, okay, yesterday morning, I'm thinking, you know, today I've got to take the time. I want to do a just a, a an online video of doing some reading the scripture to back it up and then read the, just read through the the word picture because it's so powerful you will weep when you hear it because it's that good of a picture meaning um it's not a new revelation it's just a a description of what was going on during that okay so okay i'm going to do this podcast i'm out and about shopping for my dad so i'm out and about and i get a text message from justin yesterday and wants me to preach on the fourth to fill in because he's going to be out of town. And I agree immediately. I said, okay, I'm going to use this for my text. I've got two good texts. And I'll get these two stories. It's already written. My, my sermon is written already. So my point is this. That was not no new revelation. There was nothing new involved, but an, a, an enhancement, a way to share the depth of God's word better. That, that makes sense? But again, that's God speaking to us today, not giving us new revelation, but God through an unction, through a, um, a way to bring us along uh, to inspire us to move forward based on his word. It's all based on God's word. I'm boring everybody this morning. I'm talking too much. I'm sorry. Okay, number three, why is it important? We've talked about this some. Why is it important the historical details of the Bible that they be true? Because God don't lie, so everything that's in the Bible is supposed to be true for okay. us to understand. Why would he want to uh, lie to us about um, anything when he wants us to have the knowledge on how to be saved? Right. So this is the this relationship is, with them. We're talking this here purely in this case about the historical details of the Bible. Like uh King Artaxerxes ruled from this time to this time and and uh, uh so on. It, because it's not all that like, that's what I'm I'm saying. Mm -hmm. All this money has to be supplied to authenticate something. Right. Why would you believe it? Agreed. Right? Right. Right. So the, the historical aspects of the Bible being true help us to um, relate to the fact that the rest of the Bible is true. Yeah. Yes, I agree. It's an evidence, an evidence of uh, of the truthfulness of the Bible of the Word of God. Scott, you you your question was why is it important that yep. uh, 
the Bible is true. Historical details are true. Yes. Historical details. It's important because um, it is so easy for man to believe lies. Amen. Yes. Yeah. When a lie is told, um, unless people check the facts, mm-hmm. they believe it. And worse than that, they will typically continue to spread that lie. Great. So the the truthfulness of the historical details give us kind of a, a foundation. Uh, yeah. If the Bible is wrong, then it's not the word of God. But again and again and again, despite what we think, to your point, Bill, as far as being of lying and and believing a lie, the Bible says, no, that's not true. This is true. And the Bible is always right. It's never the Bible has never anything historical in the Bible has never been proven wrong. Correct. So you you can do a Google search on recent archaeological discoveries. Yes. And uphold the truthfulness of the Bible and the written text about the Bible. It is the facts that by totally non biblical, but just historical and other written text. There's thousands of things that have been found that support it. And we're still finding more, like I said, uh, as they did. Uh, To me, it's kind of scary, but Jerusalem is, I don't know how many feet down they have to go to get back to the time of Jesus. It's because of all the rubble and everything else. Um, They have to really dig down to get to some of these uh, archaeological digs and finds that they have. But when they do, it's always proven that the word of God, what God said through his word is true. Yeah, yes. enter a Google search, most recent biblical archaeological discoveries, and you'll see a list that says discoveries in 2023, discoveries in 2022. Wow. And it goes back years after years after years of the discoveries that were found in each year. Fascinating. And that's important. And it if if we ever get and, and let's let's admit one thing, we can get discouraged. I get discouraged all the time. When we get discouraged, looking at that helps us and brings us back to uh, uh, belief and comforts us. The fact that it is true, that the scripture proves itself, gives us comfort to understand that God's revelation is true. And all this is not just for nothing. I mean, Sunday mornings, Say, I'd rather sit home having a cup of coffee with my feet up, you know. Um, I've got things I could be doing, you know. There's always stuff to do. But I think it's important to study God's Word. Mm-hmm. And this, our Bible, I certainly this morning, when I got up at 4.15 a.m., I said, I really don't want to do this this morning, Lord. <laughs> I'll guarantee. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not talking out of school here, but it's true. But Again, this is important that we get together and talk about this, about God's spend time together around God's word. You know, one another aspect of talking about the importance of the, the being true. Mm-hmm. God's word is true, whether I believe it or not. Amen. And that's important to this understanding our current society where truth has become relevant. Yes. Yes. If if, if, if I don't believe it, then it's not true. You see what I mean? And that's where a lot of people in society are thinking. And they can dismiss a lot of things which have just been recent. You've got idiots out there saying that we've never been to the moon. Because I don't believe it. I, Therefore, it's not true. I know. That's relative. Well, the Holocaust never happened. Because right. I believe it didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you see how that's just how that comes into sure. play? Sure. Absolutely. That we can see that the word of God is true. Period. Right. God's, God's word is God's word. And it's given to us for inspiration, uh, for correction, uh, for to refine us uh, and define us. But it's a foundational truth. Um, there are too many things today that you can't believe in uh, that we put our trust in men or women. Uh, and if you do that, they're gonna, we're gonna, 
I'm going to let you down sometime. I really am. I'm going to blow it. And all of us will at some point in time. So to have the fact that God's word is true and we know that our Savior uh, will never leave us nor forsake us is a real comfort, especially when you're going through uh, catastrophe, personal catastrophe, uh, loss of a child, uh, loss of a job, uh, loss of uh, uh, our wealth, if you will, the market tent, whatever. Everything else is fluid, but the word of God is solid and true. Thank God. Yes, we're well, in the need of a Savior. We need him. We do. Every day. Every day. Okay, last question. We're almost done. What would you say to someone who says the Bible is merely a human book? <clears throat> Well, for one, it was in the this video, but it's been pointed out, the fact that the apostles and all that stood so strongly for what they believed, they ended up being martyred for. Why, if you were going to push forth a fallacy, uh, try to create a religion to give yourself money, power, whatever, why would you do one that's clearly going to lead to your death, uh, be it at the hands of the, of the Jews, the Romans, whoever? Right. I mean, they, they knew that they were basically heading for death if they kept saying, yes, this is the word of God. If there was anything else they were after, it would make absolutely no sense. And why would you make such extreme claims like a virgin birth? You know, why, why if you were trying to deceive people, you would make it seem more reasonable. More palatable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, you're right. And again, um, we know that the belief system of the apostles, to your point, all but one of them were, were martyred. Some of them didn't die well at all. Um, church history tells us. Um, and so that part of the Revelation, the New Testament, uh, is in fact uh, verified by um, the martyrdom of the original, uh, thir 11 of the 12 original apostles. One of them committed suicide. And you went, and John died a natural death. He was the only one. Um, so that tells us that he that was worth dying for. Um, I say also, and I keep beating this horse, if you will, in a nice way, for all you animal lovers, but the horse I'm beating is the historical details of the Bible, the prophetic details. The prophecies that were given prior to um, just Daniel, the book we just finished, um, the Alexander the Great's coming, and then the Roman Empire's coming. Um, the most details of prophecy tell us that no, nobody could have fictionalized, that's not a fictionalized account. It has to be um, more than human because uh, Daniel certainly by himself couldn't prophesy what was going on. God was obviously speaking to him and giving him this word. The Daniel details how that happened. And reading Daniel's reactions to what was being given to him, um, I can tell you that if an angel of the Lord came down to me, started talking to me, I'd be on my face too. You know? And I'd be shaking in my boots just like he was. So it's a historically accurate and it's human in that we look at the look at Daniel's reaction to the the visitations. We look at John's John, who knew our Lord for three and a half years, worked intimately with him, um, slept in the same room, ate meals, and yet when Jesus appears to him in Revelation, he looks totally different. Number one, number two, John falls on his face. The disciple whom Jesus loved? And David. David, okay. His life. David, the righteous, and was a God man after God's own help, was a sinner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello. All right. Uh, well, it's seven o'clock. We've got to go. I know people have to go to work. Um, Mike, can you unmute yourself long enough to pray for us today? Yes. <clears throat> uh, Father, thank you for uh, Scott's efforts this morning and instruction and uh, conversation and for the film we watched. And 
and pray for all those that are going about their business now for uh, uh, safety and pray that uh, we would be able to keep our minds and our hearts focused on you throughout the day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If not, please click the link in the upper right-hand corner to view our message, the most important video you will ever watch. Join us for worship Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m., either in person at 2595 Elmwood Avenue in Kenmore, New York, or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash KNOXEPC. Find past sermons on our website noxepc.com forward slash sermons. Stay up to date with Knox Church. To receive our monthly newsletter, email office at noxepc.com. If you need prayer, send an email to pastor at noxepc.com. You can request text alerts by texting 734-968-1847. Knox Sunday School happens every Sunday at 9 a.m. for kids grades kindergarten through 8th, and for adults of all ages. Email office at noxepc.com for more information. Knox Evangelical Presbyterian Church. Our motto is truthful teaching, and graceful living. We are committed to growing in the knowledge of Jesus, serving Him by serving others, and loving the body of Christ. To donate to Knox Church via PayPal, visit knoxepc.com and click on giving at the top of the page, or scan the QR code above with your smartphone or tablet. Special thanks to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the members of Knox Church. Without them, this outreach wouldn't be possible.